Come on. It's okay, you're still a winner. You're the best loser that I know. Instead of being a loser that's somehow a winner, let's actually win. I don't have skill, but I do have technology. I'm going to apply these strains to pool to make a robot that will find and take shots that humans can only dream of. I'll also be using this robot for something that you might not expect. I'm going to use it to play pool online, physically. Playing pool takes skill, for now at least. It's also a game with many variants. I'm going to be focusing on 8-ball pool. Two players take turns trying to sink all their balls by striking a white cue ball with a stick. The gameplay boils down to two steps. Figure out what shot you want to take, and then hit the balls very precisely to execute it. I want the robot to do both of these things. The idea behind the robot is a bit more straightforward. Say I'm trying to make this shot. If I had a robot in the tip of this cue, it could move the tip so that it hits in just the right way so that the ball goes in. Here's what we're going to have to build. A camera system to watch the game and figure out what's going on. A complicated algorithm to interpret this and figure out the best shot. And a pull cue with a magic robotic tip that can take the shot for us. This is probably the most complex project that I've done. The robot cue is obviously going to have to move and rotate laterally. But pull is not 2D. Where you hit the ball vertically matters a lot. Off-center hits put spin on the ball, which gives you control over where it goes. I want the robot to have control. That means moving and rotating vertically as well. Fitting a mechanism that can do all these motions into the tip of a pull cue is going to be very hard. It's going to get fat, but my goal is for it to at least remain a stick. Instead of telescopic rods, I have the linkages on these cranks, which push them up and pull them down, but it's essentially the same. The defining feature of this Stuart platform is that it's driven remotely through tensioned cables. The servos are on one side of this broomstick, and the moving end is on the other. The electronics are pretty straightforward. They're mostly off-the-shelf microcontrollers and other components. These platforms take a bit of math to move them around, but it's really not too bad. Say I wanted this platform to move over and rotate like this. One of the actuators gets shorter, two get longer, and it results in it being in this position. If I want to calculate how long these actuators need to be, I have the solution right here in front of me. This is how long they need to be for it to go here. Conceptually, all I have to do is move the platform where I want it, and then measure the distance between these sets of points to tell me how long each actuator needs to be. I solved it by drawing a picture, but it's also very easy to solve this mathematically using linear algebra. That is exactly what my program is doing. This is a case where the results make it look much harder than it actually is. If I did everything right, the platform should move wherever I want now. Wow, working on the first try is not normal. It's pretty cool how the motions all combine, isn't it? This air cylinder on the tip of the cue will be used to fire the shot. It's connected to pressurized air, and when I open a valve, it shoots out really fast. But not all shots are done at maximum power. We need a way to vary the power from gentle touch to battering ram. To do this, I built the power pack. This tank is normally intended for car horns. The tank has a small, wimpy computer attached to it, which people call a microcontroller. The microcontroller measures the pressure with this pressure gauge. If the pressure is too low, it'll open this valve, which will connect it to my shop air and pressurize the tank. If it's too high, it'll open this valve and release the pressure. And to fire, I open this valve. It's really simple and works well. Pounded G. This cue is really cool, but it's completely useless without some more information. If I'm holding it here, how does the computer know that it needs to move it over here so the shot will go in? I have to know where everything is to be able to figure that out. I have this camera mounted on the ceiling looking straight down. It can see everything going on on the pool table. It has a big problem though. Although this table was the cheapest one that money can buy, it is not this out of square. This image makes the balls look like they're over here, but in reality, they're over here. This is caused by the camera being out of square with the table. If I took the position of the balls from this image, then I'm going to calculate the wrong thing. I glued these funny looking tags to all the corners of the table, and they're called fiducials. They're basically a reference point that's very easy for a computer to pick out of an image, kind of like a QR code. I can find these four points and then use them to straighten the image up. I know where the holes and bumpers are relative to the fiducials, so I know where they are now too. And then if I find the balls, I know where they are. And the last thing to find is the Q, which is why it has these two fiducials. One fiducial tells me where it is, two fiducials tells me what direction it's pointing. There is still one little problem. The camera only tells me where things are laterally because it's a 2D image. I don't know how high the cue is above the table or how it's tilted. Normally you rest the cue on your hand, but the height of my hand isn't controlled. There's an easy fix for this. 
It's just like my hand, except plastic, screwed to the queue, and most importantly, known height. I still don't know how it's tilted, so I added this IMU to the end of the queue. An IMU is what you give someone when you owe them money, but you're broke. IMUs can do all kinds of things, but in my case, it tells me what direction is down. So now I can compensate for tilt. I still need to make the big brain algorithm to figure out the best shot. For now, all it can do is a single ball into the hole. I show the shot in this really simple interface that I made, and if I want to hit this shot, it tells me that I need to hold the cue in this area. The problem is that the UI is on the computer and I'm at the table. I guess I could look at the computer screen, but that's awkward. I want to be unencumbered. I want to enjoy the game of pool the way that it was meant to be played. I've got an idea. I'm going to project the user interface onto the pool table. I have an annoying problem. The projector is just projecting on the table. It has no sense of where anything is. If I just display my UI on the projector, it's totally wrong. Cue ball is here, not here. If I project a grid of fiducials with the projector, I can figure out where the projector can project relative to the table. From there, it's easy to make the UI line up with anything. All right, we have everything we need to try it. Let's see what this thing can do. At this point, it looks like I succeeded in building exactly the opposite of what I wanted, which is a pull cue that always misses, even if the shot is really easy. This would make a really good wife mode. I finally found the problem. These six little servo motors are what control the end of the platform. They were sold to me with specs of how far they can rotate, but two of them don't do that, which means they're rotating a different amount than I think, which makes the end either sort of wrong or really wrong, depending on where I'm trying to move it. In my defense, you sort of assume that the thing you bought does what it says that it does. All right, let me show you what this thing can do. Have you ever woken up from a nightmare, but you're actually still asleep and you're in another nightmare? Yeah, it turns out there's more than one big problem. So something somewhere is broken. I know that, but I have no idea what it is. I feel like I went through everything trying to solve that servo problem. I flailed around helplessly for quite a while. We're gonna just fast forward through all of that. Ooh, stop, stop, this is the good part. Now back a little bit. It looks like things are in a slightly different position than my software thinks. And remember, garbage in, garbage out. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough to mess up most shots. I think this is due to some kind of optical distortion. If you've ever used a wide angle camera lens, you'll have some idea of what I'm talking about. If I take a wide angle view of the table and square it up, these points are square, but look at this edge. It's supposed to be straight. This is a distortion caused by the wide angle lens. My camera already has a calibration that should correct for this, but I'm guessing something somewhere is wrong. Day four of flailing, and I'm trying to decide if this is what the pit of despair really feels like. Everything I do that should make the system better is making it worse. Because there are so many places that this can be wrong, I'm doing a Hail Mary by developing my own calibration system. The rough idea is I take a bunch of pictures of something that I know the shape and size of, I can solve a series of equations that'll take a location in the image and directly calculate the corresponding location in the real world. Since this goes directly from the image to a predicted location, it will skip over anything that might be broken. This picture is giving me an idea of the distortion on the pool table. I don't see any physical way this could be an actual optical distortion, which implies that I am an idiot. You know how occasionally a surgeon will accidentally leave their scalpel inside of you? And then you're trying to figure out why you're sick all the time, but you never thought to look for the scalpel inside your belly? The same thing happened to me. And I guess by me, I mean my code. Way back in the beginning when I was developing this code, I was doing a little test, and I accidentally left that code dormant, deep in the bowels of my system. This code does a camera distortion correction. And this correction is for a completely different camera than what I'm using. This was subtly messing up my images, and it could be applied in a couple of different ways. <laughs> and in one case, it was applied twice. It made it very confusing. I'm exaggerating the effect so you can see it. It was a lot more subtle, five to 10 millimeters of position error. So this is roughly equivalent to punching myself in the face for five days straight. All right, moment of truth. All right, one, two, Yes, finally. They went in and it wasn't random. A neat thing I realized you can do is use this to guide normal pull shots too. 